What's up, guys? This is Matt Ramsey with the Octave Higher East Voice Studio, and this is... Alita and Carico. Yeah, and I wanted to invite Alita back uh, this time because I just, you know, I love speaking with her. And um, she has so much experience dealing um, with health and wellness and singers and singing. And I think that a question that we get as teachers a whole lot of the time is how do I deal with my stage anxiety or my performance insecurities, my singing insecurities? So I've invited Alita back this time so that we can both share a couple of tips that we have to battle your singing insecurities. So let's get it started. Well guys, I wanted to invite Alita back this week so that we could talk about um, some of the tips that we have for battling your, your stage anxiety or your singing insecurities because we both come from you know very different um, uh, experiences and have very different perspectives, but I think that um, you really need kind of like a wealth of knowledge or a lot of different tools at your disposal when you're trying to, to deal with something that's so prevalent in so many singers. I mean, I definitely know that I've felt a lot of stage anxiety before. How about you, Alita? Have you experienced absolutely. that? Absolutely. I still get nervous. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've heard that Ringo Starr still gets mm -hmm. nervous every single time before he plays. And he's been, you know, performing, what, 50 years probably now. I think if you didn't get nervous, it would mean that you're not human. You're a robot. <laughs> But you know, it's such a great point, Matt, and I think it's so important that we talk about this because it's something that we sometimes forget to deal with when we're preparing for a performance. And um, so I think one of the, you know, one of the key ingredients here is preparation. Mm -hmm. And there's two parts to preparation. I'd say the first part is to work with a qualified voice teacher to make sure that your voice is secured technically first so that you don't have to worry about how you're gonna hit that high note when you're on stage, but that you're already prepped for it. You've been vocalizing, your voice is balanced, and ready for that note when it comes in the song. And then the second part to preparation, I'd say, would be to prepare to work with the nerves. Um, allow the nerves to be there, but to work with them to your advantage. So no, you know, not letting them take over to the point where it takes over your performance, but using the adrenaline to help you have a better performance. And there's different ways of going about that. You know, Dr. Ka uh, Noah Kajayama is a performance psychologist and he has a wonderful website called uh, bulletproofmusician.com, which I highly recommend you check yes. out. It's got lots of great, you know, blogs and tips and um, he writes about the subject and he works a lot with um, musicians and performers who have performance anxiety. One of the tips he recommends is, is just a simple exercise on um, preparing your body for the demands of that adrenaline rush, that fight flight mode that we get into. Yeah. And so he suggests, you know, perhaps running on the spot, getting your heart rate up for about a minute or two, and then rehearsing the song. And so you become desensitized to that rapid heart rate while singing the song, which I thought was a great uh, thing to try. And I have tried it with some of my clients and the feedback's been great. So. Little things like that would be helpful. I'd also recommend, you know, even just visualizing, um, visualizing how you want your performance to go. Um, really listening in your mind to the music and visualizing the audience, um, the feeling about being on stage and, and just understanding that there's no real threat. You know, it's just an audience, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so easy to, to forget that um, because you just, you know, you get so, so wrapped up sometimes. Um, I think of that Tom Jackson quote that, uh, you know, 97% of the audience wants you to do well and the other 3% won't throw things at you. So, <laughs> so it, yeah, so if you think about it as the audience, hey, they want you to do well, they're on your side, it can kind of like, you know, maybe if, if some of the insecurity that you're feeling or that anxiety that you're feeling is more kind of mental about how you're going to do, that can kind of help you to oh, just compress just a little bit, you know? Yeah, you know, there, you know, the body goes into fight, flight, or freeze mode because our thoughts create that anxiety. Like right. there's, 
you know, that limbic reaction of, oh, there's a bear, you know, or there's a lion, I need to run. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, it's just an audience, it's just a performance, it's, you know, it's, and, and so there's different ways of working with the nerves. You can also try, you know, things like mindfulness meditation. Um, there's different kinds of apps you can get with that or books to read about mindfulness and to just kind of center yourself and slow down your breathing so that you, your body has a chance to, to really slow down um, and to, uh, to kind of slow down the thoughts around the performance as well. Um, so, you know, I think that's kind of a nice way of just preparing yourself for the performance. Right. Because breathing isn't important in singing, is it? <laughs> nah, not at all. Not at all. Um, and, and kind of to just dovetail with that, I wanted to throw in my two cents or my two tips um, that you know I have personally used. Um, dovetailing with the, with the mindfulness, mindfulness has been a huge revelation for me as a performer because it's, it's one of those things that I kind of used to kind of disassociate um, in order to perform. I thought, well, Matt can't be the one that's up there, you know, doing this thing. It needs to be this kind of alter ego that seems confident, that, you know, is just like says all the right things and is funny and plays all the right chords. And now it's like, you know, it's just, it's one, it's one person, you know, you want to, you want to be mindful of where you're at. Is the audience reacting? You know, how do you sound? What does it feel like to have your, your fingers on the strings of your guitar? What does it feel like to hit that high C? You know, listen to the sound of the club. Um, and that can sometimes kind of help ground you. Another one that I really like is just feeling the weight of your feet on the ground. You know, feeling that resistance, just feeling your body just kind of uh, grounded there, you know, can really have a really nice effect there. And the other big thing that I'd say is just start really small. You know, I, um, Five years ago when I was launching my singer-songwriter career in San Francisco, or maybe it was six or seven years ago, I don't even know at this point, I was like, I you know, had all these songs, but I had such intense stage fright that I needed to find a solution to, to, you know, to working my way up to playing more and more open mics. And for a while there, I was just playing every opportunity that I could. But one thing that really kind of got me... Um, what was the word you used? Maybe kind of desensitized sure. to that yeah. to that rush was I used to go and play in the train stations, and so I would just like set up shop, and you know there's like a, a hundred people who walk by in you know fifteen minutes, yeah. and you play in front of all of them, and you know yeah. win, lose, or draw, you kept playing, you know you kept doing it, you shared your music, and. Like I said, you know, that 97% rule, it's like, I had some people yell some things like, get a job and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is my job at the time. That's mean. <laughs> yeah, but so mean. It's, it, it's real though. You know, some people have very real visceral reactions to performances like that. And, you know, yeah. you have to, you just can't take it personally, but you want to do connect with and accept the positive energy from the people who do like it. And I just can't tell you how many times that I just, it, it just really feeds you. So starting from a really small place where there's really low stakes, um, one, of the, one of the hardest things about playing open mics is that you're playing in front of 20 other musicians and they're all waiting for their turn to play, you know? Yeah, that's such a great point too. You know, I think the voice is such a personal instrument too. So it's in some ways more difficult than than um, performance with an you know with, with an instrument instrumental performances although they you know violinists pianists they all definitely um, experience performance anxiety I'm sure but the voice especially because um, it's so it, it's so personal and and it's subject to criticism on a personal level and so I think understanding that if you can really secure your craft. Um, with with um, working with a teacher to help you get to uh, where you need to be for the performance, um, and then also you're, you you've made some great points there. Um, starting small is such a great idea. Even just a recital or um, an open mic, or you know just maybe adding two songs to the open mic and then seeing how you like it. Very often, what happens is the feedback I get from my clients is I want to do more. You know that was really exciting. Um, and even though they were terrified the day before their performance, 
they come back to me with the the um, you know the positive, real positive feedback about how they uh, were able to work with with the nerves and and um, enjoy the the art of performing. And I think that's really um, you know such such a wonderful thing to see in my clients. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I mean, just to just to run off of that, it's like you know, in a in a voice lesson, you're at least performing in front of one person. And that is, and you know, for, for better or worse, it's like we are critical, you know, our job is critical as a voice teacher to critique, to give feedback, always in a positive, always from a good place, but we're there to help them, you know, raise to that next level, you know, whether it's, you know, hitting a higher note or getting the larynx down or, or whatever it is but it's often hardest to sing in front of your teacher. So singing in front of strangers can be easier sometimes than singing in front of this trained voice professional that everybody has this perception that, you know, voice teachers are amazing singers, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, very often voice teachers are the most supportive ones in the audience. And, and I think also too, it's, it's important to remember as a performer to have fun, to, to yes, prepare, but to also just be curious, um, you know, about how the, how this is and just see if you like it. And, and chances are you're going to love it. Um, because if you love music and, and you love the art of performing, um, give yourself an opportunity to get out there. And like you said, start slowly, but, um, think of it as a, a joyful occasion, as a positive experience rather than, uh, you know, going back to, Oh, you know, that kind of, fight, flight, or freeze mode, really work with the nerves and, and just have fun, enjoy it. That's the most important thing. Beautiful. Thanks so much for coming on, Alita. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Matt. Yeah, have a great week. You too. Bye. Bye.